Okay, this sermon is entitled, Stumbling Blocks. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 103 reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, there are many stumbling blocks out there that would cause you know, a lot of people to not get saved. And then there are also stumbling blocks that would cause people to not you know, grow, grow in their knowledge of God. And a stumbling block is something that's meant to basically stymie or to trammel or to impede or to obstruct or to cause somebody to just you know, not care about God. And I believe one of the first stumbling blocks we deal with, and this is really quite sad because this shouldn't even be on the list, but one of the first stumbling blocks is the grace of God. There are people out there that are full of pride and they're egocentric and they are basically the type that think that they don't need God's grace. And this is why a lot of people stay lost, believe it or not. And we even see an example of this in the scripture. We see a couple examples of this where Israel wanted to go their own way. They wanted to be justified by the law. And because of this, they don't get grace. And then God even you know, blinds them. So if you turn over to Romans 11, it says in verse 5, it says, even so at, you know, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. It says, what then Israel hath not obtained? That which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, anyone who's trying to work for their salvation will never obtain salvation. We see an example of this in Romans chapter 9, the latter part of the chapter. It starts off in verse 30. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not at the righteousness, have, a, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? See, this is imputed righteousness. It's by faith alone, in Christ alone. But see, Israel wanted to go their, their way. They, they wanted to do it by the law. And it's, 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 it's the epitome of pride to sit there and think that you can obey the law to the point where it's good enough. It's, it's never good enough. In verse 31 it says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. So this tells us right here that you know, the law, which, which, which points out the fact that we are sinners, can be a stumbling block. And to those that are trusting in the law, the grace of God is even a stumbling block. Verse 32 makes this clear, Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Okay, now, if you're into religion, you know, like a lot of times the Jews, you know, and, and, and Judaism is a religion, by the way. It's a works-based religion. What happens with, with these people is the cross becomes a, stu- a stumbling block. Because think about it, if you're trying to work for your salvation, what do you need the cross for? What do you need Jesus Christ dying on the cross who who paid it all? Okay, you're trying to pay for your own salvation, so the message of grace, the message of the good news of the gospel to these people becomes a stumbling block. Now, if you're you're a helpless sinner, then it's good news. And, and And if you're saved, you understand that it's the greatest news in the world. But to those that are religious... Their religion becomes a stumbling block. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We see this in verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. So religion can keep you from God. It can be a stumbling block. Now, worldly wisdom can do the same thing. Look at verse 21. For after that, in the, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now what this is saying is that the world by wisdom, or the world because of wisdom, knew not God. Now what this tells us is that worldly wisdom will keep us away from God because God has no association with that. God does not relate to worldly wisdom. We see this again in the second, in the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, in verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So if, in order to receive the things of God, you have to receive the spirit of God. You cannot receive the spirit of the world. You cannot receive what the world has to offer. So the worldly wisdom, or man-made you know, wisdom can keep us away from God. Now, the next thing on the list is the devil uses various things to become a stumbling stone. 
Let's turn over to, or turn back rather, to Luke chapter 8. We see three more things on the list here that keep us away from the things of God. It says in verse 13, They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among you know, thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Now let's examine these three things. Number one, we have you know, the cares of this world. You know, any type of, any type of problem we have, it's going to keep us away you know, from God. People are, too, are so worried about all their, you know, their finances. They're worried about you know, this lifetime. They're not concerned about the things of God or the things of eternity. Number two, riches. When a person acquires a lot of you know, monetary gain and they have a lot of different things they would consider you know, products of wealth, then that tends to make them you know, become blithful and it makes them become apathetic to the things of God because they get this attitude that says, I don't need God. I don't need you know, Jesus. I don't need salvation. I'm good to go. You know, I'm self-sufficient. I'm you know, financially sound. And they have this, this attitude that tells them they don't need God. And then, of course, the pleasures of this life. See, the Bible makes it clear that the Word of God is, is pure. The Word of God is wholesome. The Scriptures are referred to as Holy Scriptures in Romans chapter 1. So what happens is the things of this world are totally antithetical to the things of God, and people would rather be entertained. They'd rather have you know, delectation than to have the things of God and to have um, you know, the Holy Scriptures and whatnot. So these three things can become stumbling blocks. Okay? The cares, the riches, and the pleasures of this life. And I believe one more thing is a stumbling block, and this is basically for salvation. And this is, this is a doctrine I just absolutely abhor. It's this repenting of your sins. This can be a stumbling block to getting saved. Okay, the Bible says in Acts 16, okay, let's just go ahead and turn to the, to the Philippian jailer, and it says in verse 29, Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, every person who's lost out there, who's a false brethren, a false convert, a false prophet, whatever you want to call them, these work salvation, lordship salvation people, they hate this verse because they wish it said, repent of your sins. That's what they wish it said. But it doesn't say that. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now, repenting of your sins is just false doctrine, and it's a stumbling block if you want to get saved. These unsaved false prophets out there teaching this. Well, there's two things you have to do to be saved. No, there's one thing, and it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, repenting of your sins, which is just a man-made you know, doctrine, it's just work salvation is all it is, it's a stumbling block to getting saved. Because, think about it, you can only trust in, in, in Christ for salvation. You can't trust in anything else. But see, these people are trusting in their repenting, their own ability, their own works, and then, I guess, plus Christ. But you can't do that. Okay? Jesus Christ is the only way. You have to believe on him only to be saved. So that can be a stumbling block for the lost. So, and I'm, I'm not against repenting. I mean, we, we should repent of our sins on a daily basis after we are saved. And it's, it's to get right with God. It's, it's to be blessed. It's to be rewarded. But I am against it. I am against placing it as a requirement or a prerequisite, you know, to get saved. Because it's not. Salvation is all by grace through faith alone in Christ alone, plus nothing minus nothing. So these are many, you know, stumbling blocks, and the devil's out there trying to cause believers to to stumble and fall. That's why we need to, you know, keep our guard up. We need to continue in the word so that we don't, you know, fall and trip over one of these stumbling blocks. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.